Uh, first up, delighted to welcome in this hour Sir Desmond Swain. He's a Tory MP and a former International Development Minister. Good morning to you, Sir Desmond. Good morning. Um, data, not dates, is the approach, uh, says the Prime Minister, uh, as we head exit uh, restrictions cautiously. Um, in terms of what the data is telling us, how cautious should that exit be? Uh, well, it shouldn't be cautious at all. There's an urgency to lift the lockdown. It comes at an enormous uh, social and economic cost. Uh, but what data? The data that I've been insisting on from the very start is what was originally set out as the target to protect the NHS. In other words, the data on hospital admissions. So long as the NHS is not going to be overwhelmed and it can cope effectively and efficiently, that is the time to lift restrictions. We're now seeing mission creep to other data. And it's now increasingly being the case that it's going to be the level of infections. Indeed, a level of infections down to 1,000 per day. Well, dream the dream. Imagine that COVID-19 disappears today, off the face of the earth. Tomorrow, given the level of testing that we're doing, even on the most unrealistically low calculation of false positives, you will deliver many more than a thousand cases of uh, COVID tomorrow. Yeah. And can I point and out denying, at this point that this is... the ability to lift the lockdown. The, this, people get really upset as soon as you mention the false positive rate. Every single test for anything has some the false positives and some false negatives. And this is about uh, and all tests. There, there will be problems with all tests in all circumstances it's about the rate. These tests have no no higher a false positive rate than any other test. But they, they are if you carry out hundreds of thousands or millions of tests, even a tiny, tiny percentage rate will lead to an awful lot of false of false positives. That's that's the worry, isn't it? And and, and that's the thing. If we have this as the aim, this 1,000 deaths, uh, sorry, not deaths even, 1,000 cases a day, as you say, we, we, we will never, with mass testing, reach that. Let me read you something uh, that was said by the Prime Minister uh, as he announced that we were going into this lockdown in January. He said, if the rollout of the vaccine programme continues to be successful, if deaths start to fall as the vaccine takes effect, and critically, if everyone plays their part by following the rules, then I hope we can steadily move out of lockdown, reopening schools after the February half term and starting cautiously to move regions down the tiers. Well, we're right in the middle of the February half term right now. Um, um, we know that the vaccine programme is unbelievably more successful in terms of numbers out and the effectiveness of it than anyone had dared hoped. We know that deaths have long, long, long been falling for a month now uh, as the vaccine takes, apart, takes effect. And there's no reason to believe people are not following the rules, uh, given uh, the number of people you see out and about. People are legally working who can legally work. Otherwise, people are following the rules. Um, what, what's taking the prime minister so long? We should already have had an announcement that children were going back to school on Monday. I agree entirely. Uh, and I don't know. I can't account for it. Uh, it. It just strikes me as extraordinary. We just have to find a way to hold the Prime Minister to his earlier promises. But coming back to this point, remember, we are about to, uh, it, uh, at the Prime Minister's behest, now move to an exponential increase in the level of testing. In Moonshot, 10 times more tests, which makes it ever more important to take into account the fact that even with the tiniest proportion of false positives, we're going to ever be further behind the point of being able to lift the lockdown restrictions. I understand. I mean, I may have misunderstood the science, but I understand that later you're speaking to Professor Brooks um, uh, and I'm sure that he'll be able to explain it better yes. than I can. I, you, I can trust you, you haven't uh, misunderstood the science. And I'm, I was speaking to a lot of eminent experts on and off air who absolutely assured me that we've absolutely understood this. Um, well, again, this is about the, the mass testing. There's no doubt at all that it makes sense to test people who've got symptoms and it makes sense to test people where there is a high risk. Absolutely. Testing people to then have them be isolating when they are ill so they do not pass it to other people and being able to trace their contacts. Except we we know that test and trace is going to be one of the big failures uh, of our of our COVID policy in this country. We We know also that we have, as a nation, carried out far more tests than virtually every other nation on earth. We're in like the sort of top two or three of testing. But we've also got one of the highest death tolls per capita. There's very little evidence that mass testing 
in any way cuts the death toll or, 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 or actually helps the, stop the spread of infection, given the way that it is carried out in this country. So why do you think the government, in particular Matt Hancock, is so absolutely obsessed with this moonshot mass testing, other than the fact that he's already spent billions of pounds on the tests and someone's got to use them now? Well, the great enthusiasm for testing was when we were waiting for a vaccine. Um, I simply don't understand why, why, now that we've got a vaccine and we're way ahead uh, with our vaccination program, why you would need to go on with exponential increases in testing. Uh, it strikes me as an enormous expense, which, as you say, has simply manifestly failed to deliver what press testing originally promised. If you look those those uh, jurisdictions which have used testing very, very effectively, like Taiwan, which never locked down uh, and did much better in suppressing the virus than we did, it was because there was a very effective track and trace system on top of the testing, not just a question of telling people they were positive, but tracing all their, um, their contacts and, and getting them to uh, uh, to isolate, which is something that we've never ever been able to manage. I mean, it, 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 it's not an easy thing to do, but nevertheless, other jurisdictions have managed it. But, but beyond that, I can't see the enthusiasm now for exponential increases in testing, given that we have a vaccine. Yeah, I mean, this this is the thing. There, do, there does seem to be sort of an unwillingness once the vaccine is rolled out to actually sort of to celebrate and, and use the successful rollout of the vaccine as a route out of, of lockdown, um, and which I find utterly perplexing. And again, it's the bit that it's where I start to understand why people are conspiracy theorists. I'm not one. I, I don't think there is a conspiracy. This is a real virus. Uh, I think the government has been acting a lot of the times just in blind panic rabbit in the headlights rather than anything else. Um, but I can understand why people start saying, well, hold on a minute. Why are all these medical experts, all these scientists, why are they somehow unable to see any of the good data, but but they can pounce on, and we have this problem with a lot of people in the media as well, pounce on any bad data. I mean, we looked at the, look at the latest Imperial College uh, data. Uh, this is their REACT study. They tested more than 85,000 people, for goodness sake. They have found uh, that uh, the cases have plum plummeted by two thirds since mid-January to mid-February. Uh, um, and that uh, they're now, cases are halving every two weeks. And on that basis, by the second week of April, we'll be under that mystical uh, under a thousand case rate. Um, the R rate below one now, well below one in all regions of England except in the North East. Um, I mean, th there is so much good news um, and, and, and that is even not without the evidence of the vaccine working en masse because of the number of people who'd actually been uh, vaccinated and had time for it to work. Um, and yet there's still doom and gloom about how we have to be cautious. Well, it, 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 exactly. Those figures produced tremendous excitement, joy over those figures, but, ah, but there's still those infections are still too high. And then we're back to, of course, to the issue of testing and the exponential <laughs> increase of testing. So you're in this evolution. But there's, there's something else I'd like the scientists to actually reflect on. And that is the way to which potentially we are skewering the biology of coronavirus. By lockdown, we are affecting the evolution of this disease in a way that is, um, let's say, to our disadvantage. The ordinary biology of a virus is to mutate new strains into milder forms, because yep. after all, it's in the interests of the virus to have a mild effect so that you don't reduce your host to being bedridden on the contrary, they remain active, they go out and spread it amongst all their friends. So the whole emphasis of the disease is to become um, less uh, potent. The danger is with lockdown, we've actually changed the, um, the, the Darwinian principle of the survival of the fittest, so that actually it's the more potent, more infectious variants that will only be able to overcome the effects of social distancing and lockdown and all the rest. Hence, perhaps, the Kent variation, which is now becoming the dominant strain in the world. And what is true for coronavirus will equally be true for every other virus that is out there. There are quite a lot of concerns that next year, next this, well, this coming winter, we're going to have bigger problems with, with flu because, because we've suppressed the flu this year. 
um, in th this last winter and that we may end up seeing a more virulent strain uh, with which we don't possibly have a vaccine of the flu. This year. I mean, hey, but that, that just enters us into a whole new world of, of, of annual lockdowns, Sir Desmond, something for us all to look forward to. Annual lockdowns, which will make it even worse. Hurrah! And on that happy, I, I, it was going so well. You were cheering me up. Uh, so Desmond <laughs> Swain, Tori B, thank you very much indeed for joining us. 7.17 is the time. Let's get to Benjamin Butterworth on the line. Um, again, that was something we were discussing, actually, in the half six uh, uh, section, uh, Benjamin, about uh, about lockdowns actually, you know, being being bad for the mu mutation issues. But let, let me let me just let's talk about this idea about mission creep, which is something Sir Desmond's spoken about many times, that actually, you know, and going back to what the prime minister said when we went into lockdown, we've already fulfilled all the criteria that he stated were necessary to come out of uh, lockdown. Why is everyone still so hesitant? I mean, have we fulfilled the criteria? Yes. There was something like 800 people who died yesterday in the latest 24-hour figures. We know that the number of cases is over 10,000. Mm -hmm. The only way for people to die is for the cases to spread. And mm -hmm. I think that's why it makes no, sense. The rollout, the rollout of the vaccine is successful. Deaths start to fall, as they've been doing. Uh, and uh, and everyone plays their part following the rules. So, yeah, yeah, we fulfilled all the criteria he used. I mean, I don't think that the actual criteria will have been deaths start to fall because that's well, they're not. They loose. they're halving every two weeks, and they're down. I mean, I mean, they they they've more than halved. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. That that's not starting to fall. You can you can literally look at a graph. It goes all the way up and it comes all the way down again. But when 800 people a day are dying, and that's people that were infected, chances are in mid-January, which is very recent, and after a month of the rollout of the vaccine, you know, that's still a big issue. And I think that we should be careful because this will be the last lockdown, assuming that there are no problems with the vaccine. Oh, and that's why good we should do it with... as carefully and properly as possible. We are um, Carefully would involve coming out sooner and not doing any more damage. But again, people keep saying it's the last lockdown. That They've said that for the last two. But um, good luck. Good luck with that.